Hello, my name is Lisa LaLiberty. I'll be speaking on the basics of auto insurance. For most people, buying an automobile is their first major purchase. Actually, a new car is second only to a home as the most expensive purchase many consumers make. With vehicle prices averaging over $28,000, it's easy to see why one would want to protect that investment. Before we talk about coverage for the automobile itself, I'd like to start with what many people believe is the most important coverage of all, liability coverage. Liability coverage pays for the injuries or damage you or someone driving your car cause to other people or their property. The two liability coverages are called bodily injury liability and property damage liability. Every state has different laws dictating the minimum coverage you must carry for this. Some states require you to prove you have insurance before registering a motor vehicle, and other states use the honor system, where you only have to provide proof if you have an accident or violation. A typical state required minimum coverage is 25-50-10, and I'll provide an example shortly to explain what that means. There are four states that do not require drivers to carry any liability coverage. Just because it's not required by law doesn't mean you don't need it. Let's say you have an accident. You're distracted momentarily and rear-end the BMW in front of you. There are three people in it, all of whom suffer some injury. If you're carrying liability coverage of 25, 50, 10, that means your insurance company will cover the cost of any one person's injuries, rehabilitation expenses, pain and suffering, and time loss from work up to $25,000. But they will not pay more than $50,000 for the accident regardless of the number of people injured. This is the bodily injury portion. And your insurance company will pay up to $10,000 for the property damaged. So three people are injured. Let's say their injuries total $75,000. And the BMW has rear end damage of $13,000. Your policy will pay for $50,000 for all injuries and $10,000 for the property damage. Where does the remaining $25,000 for bodily injury and $3,000 for property damage come from? Once your policy pays the maximum limits, you could be held personally responsible for the remaining amount. It's generally recommended that you carry more than the state minimum coverage to protect yourself from this financial risk. The next coverage under an automobile policy is medical payments coverage. This provision protects you and your passengers if you're hurt in a car accident regardless of who's at fault. The coverage also extends to you and your family members if you're a passenger in someone else's car or if you're a pedestrian injured by an automobile. Medical payments coverage pays the medical bills resulting from an accident up to a per person maximum, commonly $5,000. There are no deductibles and no waiting period under this coverage and prescription drugs related to the injuries are covered. Consider that accident with the BMW again. Let's say that you and your passenger are both injured and taken by ambulance to the hospital. Medical payments coverage of $5,000 will cover the cost of the ambulance ride, the emergency room visit, and subsequent doctor's visits up to $5,000 per person. If your medical bills total $7,000 and your passengers total $3,000, the policy will pay $8,000 under this coverage. Some states have a medical payments coverage known as personal injury protection, or PIP. This coverage may have a deductible, and it may allow you to collect for lost wages and rehabilitation expenses, two things that regular medical payments coverage does not cover. A third coverage provided by an automobile insurance policy is uninsured and underinsured motorist coverage. This coverage is quoted similarly to bodily injury liability. Even though mandatory insurance laws exist in 48 states, nearly 15% of all accidents are caused by uninsured drivers. Uninsured motorist coverage provides protection for you and your passengers when you're injured in an accident with an uninsured motorist. It will cover your medical bills, rehabilitation expenses, lost wages, pain and suffering, things you could have claimed against the at-fault party's insurance if they had it. Underinsured motorist coverage will cover those same losses if the at-fault party's coverage is insufficient for your loss. Keep in mind, in most states, the uninsured, underinsured motorist coverage applies to injury only and not for damage to your vehicle. 
Protection for your automobile is provided under the collision and comprehensive portions of a policy. Collision coverage applies when you have an accident involving another vehicle or an object, such as a telephone pole, a guardrail, a building, or when you overturn your vehicle. Comprehensive coverage applies in losses involving fire, theft, vandalism, broken glass, hitting an animal, flood or hail damage, or other losses not caused by collision. These coverages have a deductible, the amount you must pay before the insurance company pays the damages. Common collision deductibles are $500 or $1,000, and common comprehensive deductibles are $100 or $250. If your automobile is financed, then you're required by the bank or financer to carry comprehensive and collision coverages until that loan is paid off. It's important to note, an insurance company will never pay more to fix your vehicle than the vehicle is worth. Two other coverages available through many insurance companies are towing and emergency road service and rental car reimbursement. While these coverages are optional, I always recommend them as part of my full coverage package. Automobile insurance rates are based on many factors, including where you live, your age, what you drive, how much you drive, and the coverage you carry. One way to keep your insurance costs down is to take high comprehensive and collision deductibles. As a vehicle gets older and is not financed, many people choose to drop these two coverages completely as a way to save money. Additionally, many people choose to pay for small claims out of their own pockets as a way to keep their rates down. But remember, the coverage you carry is just one of the factors contributing to the cost of insurance. There are things you can do to make sure you get the best price possible. The first is to keep your driving record clean. Your driving record is used as a predictor of future experience. Accidents and violations stay on your record for three years, and major violations and suspensions stay on for five years. Many companies now use a scoring model that combines your driving record with a variety of other information, including certain elements of your credit history and prior insurance claims to determine your cost for insurance. This means that paying bills on time could affect your insurance rate, as could the number of claims you file on your policy. Automobile insurance can be confusing but a little knowledge can go a long way in providing you the protection you need.